first workout in our brand new gym featuring the Mineral Mobile. Remind me to never say that again. <laughs> but I used to work for a fitness equipment company and we had some great stuff. We had a lot of pre-owned stuff that was phenomenal. So I hit them back up. They got me a pretty good deal. And I'm about to show you what I got. I mean, this is basically everything I need to get a full workout in. I'm never gonna have to leave this house, which is the idea. We also have a brand new sauna on the way. We already have a steam room in our shower. But most importantly, this is complete. I haven't worked out in like two weeks because of the baby, which is obviously a great thing. So I'm a little out of shape, if anything. Um, but nonetheless, let's check it out. Hold on, let me put my stuff down. So this used to be just a regular shop with random stuff in it. And essentially, we turned it gym. And I got this speaker as well. Got this Sony speaker. Got to unbox it. But we got our kettlebells. I don't use these often, but I do like to do kettlebell swings for the glutes. We have our Peloton that just collects dust. I'm just kidding, Bree uses it. <laughs> um, and then we have this multi-gym stack from Matrix. So this turns into a shoulder press and then obviously lays down flat. We can do regular bench. Um, over here, we have our leg press, or sorry, leg press, leg curl and leg extension uh, for leg, uh, leg curl. This will, this will lay flat and then you can do a face down leg curl. Full squat rack, of course, we got our plates. We got a pretty cool copper bar. It looks rusty, but it's actually copper. Thought that was pretty sweet. Um, functional trainer, our functional trainer is unfortunately missing an important piece, which is the weight stack. <laughs> but the weight stack will be here on Thursday along with the sauna and the cold plunge, which I'll show you guys when I get it. So this is just a whole wellness center now. We're making it a, a dang resort. Um, here's our lap pull down, and then we have our row, which to row, you just push that back, grab that, and you're good to go. And that's it. Then obviously, if you didn't see already, we got a full dumbbell rack all the way up to 100s. Yes, I will use the 100s. Don't worry about what it's, what it's for. <laughs> but TKO is a great brand. This is a brand that I sold a lot when I was uh, um, working this job. Actually, really quality stuff on the more affordable side. Even these benches, these benches are super, super sturdy. Um, so I am super excited about this whole setup. And if we do need it, we have AC, we have a heater if we really need it. But I honestly like it, kind of feels a little warm in here. And I prefer that, get a good sweat going. And then we're gonna put our sauna in this corner. It looks ugly right now, but we'll make it pretty. But nonetheless, wanted to show you guys. Um, we could talk a little bit about workouts. You know, I don't do anything extravagant. If you're just an average Joe, you just wanna lose weight, you wanna feel better. You don't have to do these elaborate things. You don't have to really pay for fitness programs. Unless you're a super beginner, then I think it is beneficial. But there's also always YouTube. So maybe on some of these videos for you guys, I'll show some basic movements. I learned a lot from when I was a college athlete, played college baseball for six years, learned from some of the best strength coaches in the country, like TCU, um, Zach Dakin was awesome. And we got to learn some really functional and useful things, a lot more than just, hey, let's push some weight. Let's see how much weight we can lift. Um, in college, it was more about form and doing it right, obviously, so you don't get injured, but more importantly, so you get benefit out of the movement because you can lift super heavy, but you may not be benefiting your muscles. You may not be growing the right muscles. You may be pushing with the wrong muscles, like for example, on, on bench, if you try to do a bunch of weight and you're just using all your arms or you're doing weird movements, it's not gonna benefit you. And, and for myself, I do less barbell movements. You know, the fact we really even have a barbell here is crazy. I, I prefer machines now um, and dumbbells. That's why I got this full dumbbell rack because I can get a better workout, a more focused workout on the movement, like for chest or back, um, obviously arms, biceps, 
versus if I were to be doing big Olympic lifts with a bar, you know. Um, so obviously we'll, we'll squat with that. We'll st I don't even flat bench anymore. I always bench with, with dumbbells and, and I've seen great growth. Even with the uh, lat pull downs, you know, all, all back movements, I really prefer machines. Um, legs as well, leg press, leg curl, leg extension. It just allows you to really focus on the muscle and not focus on how much weight you're trying to lift, which obviously you wanna lift heavy. That's how you're gonna create movement. You have to make yourself uncomfortable in the gym. Imagine that. Um, if you want to see any change, okay? So going to failure is the rule of thumb for anything. If you want to do one or two warm-up sets or one or two lighter sets and then your last set, take it close to failure. And that means you're like making faces, you're, you're struggling. Like everyone's definition of failure is a little different, but as long as you're straining yourself one or two of, set, two of the sets in that workout, that's ideal. Um, and then you're actually able to do less. I used to be the guy who did two hour workouts and a lot of volume, a lot of sets, and it, it only made me more tired and it wasn't allowing me to really focus on what was important, which was actually getting some serious strain on that specific muscle group by going to failure, okay? So that's key number one. Number two is frequency. I used to go five days a week. That's what's what I was used to because of college sports. College sports sometimes was obviously six days a week of activity, whether it was playing, practice, lifting, running, training of some sort. But now that I'm just an average citizen in this world, um, <laughs> I go th about three days a week. You know, it may be different now that I have this here, but I still prefer a good three days a week because those three days, I typically do a full back and one part of the arm, so back and by maybe. I hit that super hard one day. I'll come back, I'll do chest, shoulders, and traps. And then, and then the next day, I'll do a full leg day. And then obviously every other day, I'm getting my steps in. I'm not just completely laying around and sitting around. Um, you know, walking the dogs, golfing, walking around the neighborhood, longboarding, it just depends. Last year I was snowboarding a lot, that was a lot of my activity and calories burnt. But I don't quote unquote do cardio, I'm not really walking on a treadmill that often unless I'm warming up. So what I've found is you get those three days a week, you're not going to be burnt out, you're going to actually enjoy going because you can focus, you don't have to feel like you have to be there every day, especially if you have a busy schedule. And then also, you're going to see more results because you're going to be able to rest. Your body and your muscles are going to be able to recover as they should. All right, so you guys will see me in here more. I'm going to probably film in here more. We got good, bright, freaking bright lights. Um, it's quiet. We have a baby now, so there's crying in the background. Obviously, I love my, my child and I am happy to be there for him, but sometimes we gotta be able to focus and give you guys some value um, so you're not hearing a baby in the background all the time, but you will, don't worry, we're gonna bring him in here. I'm excited to be able to like put my kid down on the floor or in his little bassinet or stroller and he can just watch me work out, you know, monkey see, monkey do. And then as he keeps growing up, he's gonna be in here with us getting after it. Um, he's gonna be one healthy baby, you guys know that. He'll be taking his minerals, he'll be eating good, whole nutrient-dense foods. He'll be active, he's gonna be strong. We're gonna build some sort of athlete. Me and my wife are both college athletes, so we got a good chance he'll be good at something. <laughs> but um, quick update on him, just so you guys know what's, what's going on. He was born on August 30th at 2.50 p.m. It was a crazy experience for my wife. I cannot say enough how impressed I am. I am not really familiar with babies or labor or any of this stuff. I was completely green on this whole world and I learned a lot. I am blown away at what women go through, you know, to have children. It's crazy. So first time moms, apparently it's normal or normal-ish if you do a natural birth for it to be 24 hours. So it literally took my wife 24 hours to have our child. I can't believe it. She was a trooper. She did attempt 
and did an amazing job at the birthing center. She wanted to do it natural. She didn't want an epidural. She really um, was adamant about that, which I commend, of course. It was awesome to see. And it was also very hard to watch because knowing that she's going through that pain, feeling everything, it was um, crazy. And I'm just watching. You know, I was like really concerned the whole time. So after we start there, we, we got to the birthing center. It was like two or three in the afternoon. Um, on the 29th, and she went through contractions and labor for a good 12 hours at that birthing center. And by the time it was 3 a.m., almost 4 a.m., we were realizing that Atlas, our kid, was not in the best position. He was kind of in a wonky position. He was sideways, so she wasn't getting much progress when she was actually um, trying to, to push and, and do the whole thing. <clears throat> so. We made a decision, uh, or she made a decision really. I was like, hey, whatever you want to do here, I'm going to support it. But she wanted to go to the hospital. Luckily, the hospital was right down the road. She got an epidural because he needed to be able to move. And she was so tired, so exhausted, straining herself like crazy, trying to have this kid. Um, it kind of digressed her progress, uh, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So she had to calm the swelling, she had to relax, she needed to get a little rest, so the epidural was a lifesaver. And it gave me a new perspective on hospitals. You know, I don't really go to hospitals, I don't go to a doctor, I don't have a primary care physician, I don't really uh, do that stuff because of my previous experience and just kind of what I know now. So I'm always a little, skeptical in a way about hospitals and what they're gonna push on you, what they're gonna make you do or inject you with, like it just makes me a little nervous. Um, but I will say for emergency situations like that, a thousand percent worth it. You're injured, you break an arm, you have any emergency, we are so thankful they exist because the doctors and nurses were very, very friendly. They were amazing. And I'm so glad she was able to get that epidural. And she was the happiest camper ever. She was like smiling and just having a good time. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't feel anything. And this was before, before labor. <laughs> um, so I was happy to see her happy. I was like, man, okay. Medical inventions are pretty dang cool. Um, <clears throat> so that went on. She was able to relax, rest a little bit. She ended up having him 12 hours later, like I said, 2.50 in the afternoon on the 30th. Woo. Everything was good. It was a little sketch. Um, they had to do some interesting things to make it happen, but regardless, we are so happy. We are thankful he's here and healthy and safe. And more importantly, Bree is safe, my wife, and we can now just enjoy being parents, which also, number two, is completely different from what I was expecting. Um, I had no, again, no experience, no expectations. I, I was expecting the worst just because I was like, man, this is going to be crazy. I'm not going to be sleeping. This is going to be this. I'm going to have to always do that. And obviously I'm happy to do it, but I just didn't know any better. So after our first now about week and a half of having a child walking around with us, not walking around, we're carrying him around. <laughs> Um, it's amazing. It's given me a new outlook on life. It's made me less, less selfish, that's for sure. You know, I'm not the only one. Me and Bree are, aren't the only ones we have to worry about. Um, we've had, we got Huskies, but it's a whole other story. Um, and most importantly, it just, it kind of makes you slow down. You know, a lot of our lives can get really hectic and we prioritize different things based off of that. But I've found that I'm able to be more in the moment with him around um, because we're showing him a life, a world, outside, nature, like things he's never seen before. Obviously, he's still very young, but I love taking him outside, showing him like, hey, that's a tree. <laughs> and that's the sun. Like just, it's so cool. And it makes us, it's a reminder to us that we get very distracted and our, our priorities get very jumbled when we have all this stuff going on. We don't ever take a step back and just be like, dang, like, that's actually beautiful. I can enjoy this sunset. I don't have to be on my phone right now. Um, and I can just slow down. And I think that's beneficial for anybody watching this is just take a step back, look at the big picture, look where you came from. Look, you started the little, little baby and now you're where you are. I'm where I am. It's wild. So it's really cool that we have the opportunity to show him life and grow him and make him healthy and strong. Obviously, I'm so blessed we have the knowledge we do to make sure he's uh, safe in that aspect. But 
It's been awesome.